responsiveness of your website from your browser before you actually put it out for people to see. So you can use CSS Grid and Flexbox to align as an example of um, Grid to align your items in the website. For those taking pictures, I'll share with you the slides if you need them because I have some references about Grid and Flexbox in the slide. So you take your time if you're looking to go into web development. These are one of the most important things, especially in CSS, for layouts and grid to just kind of align your website in a visually appealing way. So my next tip is using JavaScript libraries. Uh, how many of you are JavaScript developers? We have another one, yes. So, if you've written JavaScript for some time, you notice that there are some frameworks like React, Angular, they come with ready-made uh, components for you to just implement some of these, this, um, to implement some of these things we have talked about, like the responsiveness, you can actually start developing your website testing responsiveness from the beginning using some of these component components. For example, React has uh, React Bootstrap, and there's also Vue.js, and also Angular for that. Um, so performance. So you want to make sure that uh, your website is performing really great in terms of speed, in terms of navigation by the user, in terms of everything that is happening. So, by doing that, you can minimize HTTP requests by optimizing your images. When you log in to some websites, you see maybe some images are not loading. Uh, you can use lazy load if you're implementing something like that to, to optimize the images. And also, um, you can check for performances on your website that link page speed.web.dev you put the URL to your website there and then it will give you a display of how your website is performing, whether something is wrong with it. So using this tool will help you to kind of work on your site and make changes that will just make it better in terms of performance. Because especially with loading, loading time, loading speed, people don't want to go on websites which is taking like minutes to load. So your website should take like how many how many seconds David? The best the best speed for websites, yes. <laughs> yes, actually zero seconds. A fast website should not be zero point two seconds. More something like that. But when you use that tool it will actually show you what is causing your website to be slow and what is causing your website to whatever, and you'll, you'll be able to fix those issues. And then accessibility. Uh, accessibility, make sure that you're developing it for the user. Uh, one time, somebody, somebody asked for a, a review of a website we were building, and I had to go through that website from Parts A to the last bit of it, and I wrote a honest feedback about each of that that website. But then there were issues with the website, and I asked him. I said, "ABC is not working," and his response was, "It works on my computer." Now, when you're building a website, you're not building it for yourself. Who disagrees or what? You're building it for someone to use it. It's, it might work on your computer, but then someone else somewhere might be wanting to access it, and then it's not working on their devices. So make sure that accessibility is at the fingertip when you're trying to uh, implement your front-end skills, and make sure that everything is working, and then it's very good to get feedback, because it is from feedback 
that is how you're going to improve either on your website or on your development skills. So make sure that you connect with uh, people around you who are doing the same things. If you want to be, if you are already a front-end developer and you're facing challenges with something, make sure you connect with developers. For example, we have WordPress here. There are people who are good at one WordPress front-end development here. So connect with them and get feedback from them. Show them what you have already so that they can give you feedback. And then to make it again more accessible, make it host it online. Uh, someone was mentioning some hosting platforms. We have Bluehost, which is one of the sponsors here. There is also WebDaddy. So you can host it online so that it reaches a wider range of people worldwide. So another important thing is uh, testing. Testing, testing, testing. Before you put your work up there, make sure that you have tested it and it is doing exactly what you intended it to do. Don't just put it out there before testing it because issues are going to come and you're going, it's going to you as a shock. So I really recommend uh, before putting up your site or before hosting, you have to test. There are tools like browser stack and cross browser testing to automate some of this testing process. And um, unfortunately, we don't have like a practical session for this. So, anyone with any more tips? <laughs> if you have any tips or any other questions, you can ask. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. So my question, my question is you took a lot of knowledge with the CSS and all that. So basically, you are French and now I'm asking, what if, okay, for me, I've done the HTML bit and I'm done with it. Do I bring my, okay, do I call you and I'm going to come and help me with the JavaScript and the CSS and the like, for you to do the final French end of like because I'm not understanding. Okay, I understand what you do, but I want to ask you also get yourself involved in the HTML like coding, which of the behind part of the computer. Once you front end is basically the user layout. So I think the perspective at which I was presenting was that perspective of a front-end developer. But then if you're working as a team, there is someone who is going to work on the back end, yeah? But then if you're full stack, that means you're going to handle all the HTML, all the CSS, uh, and then you come back with the back end, which is maybe the JavaScript. But however, you can also use JavaScript in front end. Like I mentioned, there are these libraries that can help you uh, come up with really amazing user interfaces. Yeah, but then if you're full stack, that would mean you now you use another JavaScript uh, library called Node.js to implement your backend. I hope that answers your question. 